kingdom animalia can be divided into two phylum phylum that has skeleton and phylum that has organisms that do not have a skeleton now if you see fishes human beings frogs reptiles like uh, snakes and birds all of them have a skeletal structure now where does this skeletal structure evolve or arise from well if you see the embryo of all these organisms you will find this soft rod shaped structure which is known as the notochord which gives rise to the skeletal system in all living organisms now all these living organisms are put under the phylum chordata where chord comes from the word notochord now you see so many living organisms all of them have a skeletal structure that is all of them fall under the phylum chordata but can you differentiate between them well look at these two living organisms this is a human being this is an ape these two organisms can directly give rise to a young one that is they can give birth to a young one directly which is not possible by these organisms that you can see all of them lay eggs so these two organisms are completely different from them but that does not mean that all of these organisms are same or similar they have a lot of differences among them as well for one see birds have uh, wings to fly fishes have fins to swim around frogs have limbs to move around whereas uh, reptiles such as snakes and crocodiles have very reduced feet or in most cases like the snakes they crawl on their chest so all these organisms has to be kept under different classes but under the same phylum chordata now let us first come to human beings what are the various characteristics of human beings well firstly organisms like human beings and monkeys can give birth directly to young ones secondly they have hair on skin and they are warm blooded that is they can regulate their own body temperature and keep their body warm even when atmospheric temperature changes fourthly they can move with the help of limbs and finally they have a four chambered heart so such organisms are placed under the class mammal where mammal comes from the word mammary gland because these mammals breastfeed their young ones now how do the mammals breathe yes mammals breathe with the help of lungs now let us see the next class that comprises of all the birds that you see birds lay eggs unlike mammals that can reproduce young ones directly they have feathers instead of hair on the skin even they are warm blooded like the mammals that is they can regulate their body temperature they can fly and they also have a four chambered heart even birds respire through lungs so the class under which birds fall or birds are categorized is known as aves which means flying now both these organisms uh, or the class of organisms that is mammals and aves are known as homeothermal 
animals. Now why? Because homeo means same and therm means heat. So what does homeothermal mean? It means that both these classes of organisms are warm blooded. That is they can regulate their own body temperature and they are not affected by the environmental temperature. Even if the environmental temperature drops a lot, the body temperature will be regulated. Now let us come to the next class of living organisms under the phylum chordata, these creepy and slimy organisms that you see. Well, even these organisms like birds, they lay eggs. Instead of feathers, they have scales on their skin. Now, unlike mammals and birds, they are cold-blooded. That is, they cannot regulate their body temperature. They have some reduced limbs. But in case of snakes, the reduced limbs are too small and are too vestigial. So they, so they move on the basis of their chest. And finally, unlike the birds and the mammals, they have a three-chambered heart. Now, even these organisms or these animals breathe through their lungs. The class of living organisms that these animals form are known as reptilia, which means creeping. Now, just like mammals and birds were known as homeothermal animals, these animals that are cold-blooded and cannot regulate their own temperature are known as poikilothermal animals, where poikilo means varied and therm means heat. Now, these organisms that you can see are also poikilothermal organisms. That is, they are cold-blooded and they cannot regulate their own temperature. Apart from that, they lay eggs. They have a very slimy skin. They have limbs with which they can move around. And finally, they have a three-chambered heart. Now, a speciality about these organisms is that they have a dual life cycle. Their first life cycle starts in the water when they have gills. And the next life cycle takes place on lands when the gills transform into lungs. So this class of living organisms are known as amphibia, where amphi means both and bia means life. So they have both life cycles or two life cycles and so they are known as amphibia. Even the amphibians are cold-blooded or poikilothermal animals. Now, another class of animals or living organisms that are cold-blooded are fishes. Fishes can lay eggs. They have scales on their body like reptiles. They are cold-blooded, as I said. They have fins for movement. But unlike the, uh, the previous organisms that had three-chambered heart, these organisms have only a two-chambered heart. The class that these organisms form is known as Pisces, which means fish. So this is the animal kingdom where on one side there are organisms without a skeleton like the insects, whereas on the other side there are organisms with the skeleton which are further classified into five class, namely mammal, aves, Pisces, 
amphibia and reptilia.